Alright, so what's up, people? We back with another video. Versus 2020 is the name of the channel. Y'all know the name of the game. Uh, it's where we compare things, all the different things that I know and that I have um, that I have knowledge on. So today we're going to be talking about the difference in filming with your your camera on your phone versus an actual DSLR camera. Uh, right now, that's what I'm filming with. Other than that, I would have had my camera right here to show you guys uh, what to do, all the differences. So I have the 11 Pro. Um, iPhone. The cameras on there are very good. I remember from back in the day, you know, uh, phones back then in comparison to what they are now, you definitely could pull a, a whole lot off um, nowadays with actual phone cameras. But I just want to let y'all know some of the differences, some of the benefits. Uh, first, you can, you can start in pricing. Funny thing, to be honest, you can get you a, a decent uh, DSLR camera at a cheaper price than, uh, than iPhones nowadays, to be honest. Uh, this is the Lumix GA7 uh, Panasonic 4K camera. It only cost me like 500 bucks while my iPhone was, um, I think, 1100 something like that. You know, but in the long run, the camera's going to pretty much equal up to that or even more based off the lenses and everything that you buy. So I'm going to start with uh, the different settings that you have when you have a DSLR camera or when you film with the phone. When you're filming, when you're filming with your phone, it's not, um, it's not too much that you can really do as far as... Um, Filming goes with, with your phone. Uh, you can set the 24 frames per second. Um, I believe they have the 60 frame per second. That way, if you want to do slow motion shots, uh, whenever you go into editing software, you'll go back 50% uh, and it'll drop it down to 30 and, and slow motion to play in a smooth uh, normality versus, you know, being choppy. So, but when I say settings with a camera, now, uh, with an iPhone, you can only film in auto. And what auto does is whenever you have a scene that's lit up, you know, you have different lighting scenarios going on. Um, a lot of times, auto isn't the, really the best way to go. I say auto is a great way to go when you don't really know what you're doing. Because, um, you know, um, auto auto overexposes things. Like, uh, I had, had my camera in auto at first, and it just overexposed with the, you know, with the setting, with the light settings that I have going on right now um so you want to use you know your you want to take advantage when you have a dslr camera you know you want to take advantage of the, the aperture the shutter speed and iso those all three of those things play three different key parts um shutter speed is for um motion blur like the more shutter speed you have as i'm doing this it'll give me more or less uh, motion blur um also with um with the isolation i'm kind of forgetting but I believe the isolation is what, what opens and closes the camera. Either way, all three of those sets basically are going to give you either a lighter or a brighter setup. So that's one of the perks of having an um, actual DSLR camera. So, yeah, you, you definitely want to do that because, like I said, if stuff is um, overly exposed, it doesn't really look good. Now, you can color grade things, and uh, that, that may help. I'm not completely sure because I haven't really color graded anything in auto. I shoot it manual now, basically. Um, off of my camera, and I, I don't use my phone that much. I, I'll pull it out from time to time, but I don't really use it that much. One second, everyone. Mm -hmm. I didn't even back. Um, so uh, we're gonna go down to um, yeah. Well, I spoke about the frames per seconds. Uh, we're gonna go down now to the different lenses. Now, the thing I've seen on on an iPhone or well, not sure if it's iPhone. I think it's phones period, but um, the newer phones anyway. But uh, different lenses make up everything. Like right now, I'm using my zoom lens. Um, my 25 millimeter lens is not able to zoom, but it does give me bokeh. And what bokeh does is it blurs the background, which makes things look a lot more um, professional. But it's, it's zoomed in, and I can't zoom out. You know, I'd have to pull the camera back further. So that's a great, you know, deal with having uh, lenses. Now nowadays, the newer iPhones they let them they let them zoom out pretty far. Like uh, I don't even remember um, phones being able to zoom out. I always remember being able to zoom in, so that's pretty cool. But like I say, um, there's so many, so many lenses. I'm not even gonna get into it, but there's so many lenses for different shots. You know, different dramatics that you may wanna um, apply. Now, um, on the iPhone, uh, I'm sorry, on the phone, I noticed there's something on Amazon. It's like a wide lens thing. And uh, it's like a clip or something that you add to the back of the phone. I'm probably going to invest into that and get that for my iPhone. That way on the day that I don't have my camera with me, I can just pull my uh, iPhone out and I can get, you know, further shots. 
but um, it's like an, an attachment that you put on the back of the phone, and it, it gives you a wider um, angle of things. So that that's pretty cool. But yeah, like I say, different lenses. That's another benefit of having a DSLR camera versus um, filming with your phone. Uh, so let's see. I kind of wrote things down because I'd be forgetting stuff. I'd be trying to talk. So um, let's see. Okay, yeah, I spoke about that already. The manual mode. All right. Um, uh, with this camera here, I'm able to drop down to the 1080p, um, but it does film in 4K. Um, I'm not sure how low the iPhones go nowadays, how, how low down they go as far as settings, but I do know, I noticed the difference with the 4K in this camera versus the 4K on my actual iPhone, so that's just a purpose, that's probably just preference if you ask me. Um, also, something that's really good because I've shot a few videos I've been sitting there like this shoot videos and something that ended up happening to me was um I had uh, uh, I had filmed this whole thing and I didn't I didn't have it scripted or nothing it was something for this channel and I had got a phone call and I didn't know and that stopped my camera from filming because what a lot of people probably don't know is they think because um, the iPhones and the new Android shooting 4k that the front camera is 4K now. Nah, the front camera is like 1080p or maybe even less, to be honest. So um, remember that whenever you're filming something, you have to film the back side of the camera. The, well, on the 11s, they have the three cameras, but just the back of your camera if you want to get that 4K quality. Um, just a little tip. But um, I was filming something and I didn't know. And see, that's the perk of having a DSLR camera. They have a, a screen that flips out so I can see. Like right now, I'm watching what I'm doing. Um, on, on, a, on my camera right now, I can actually see everything that's going on, so I don't have to worry about any disturbances. The only thing I have to worry about is my battery dying, but then preventative maintenance, keep it charged, you don't have to worry about that. But, um, yeah, you, you can't see anything on your camera. There's no, you know, once it's turned backwards and it's sat up on the, uh, the tripod, there's no way to know if somebody called you or nothing. But then there's people that will say, well, put it on D&D, do not disturb. I feel that. But just anything, it might die, any of that, and you, you may not know. You'd be sitting up here, you know, doing a seg segment or whatever you're doing, and you've been missed out on your material because you didn't realize that, you know. So, um, that that's definitely a great thing about having a DSLR camera, the front, the front camera. Um, okay. Uh, maybe this is a personal thing, but I, I like the grip better on DSLR cameras. Like, they, they have a, a real good grip on them versus when you're using your iPhone, you have to kind of hold it like this, a selfie stick it or anything like that. You know, that may be personal preference. I can selfie stick my uh, camera as well, too. I have a tripod that um, that turns into like a selfie stick once I close it up. Um, the one I'm using right now, actually. So, you know, that might be a personal preference thing. Um, let's see. Different attachments. Okay, we'll talk about that. Different attachments. Um, there's bigger screens that I can install. I'm not even sure the size of screen that comes on a, a general camera, but um, there are bigger screens. I have a, a seven inch um, monitor. Uh, it, it's, it filmed in a 1080p. I have uh, that that monitor that I can attach on top of my camera to, like, cause my camera isn't that far, but it's not that close neither. So I, instead of me having to do this and try to see on the screen, I, I'd be able to see a lot better, so that's a bonus being able to attach those different things. Now, there's microphones that you can attach um, to your phone, like lavalier mics and stuff like that, that you can, you know, plug to your phone. Um, and then there's the roll mics that you can put on top of your camera. So it's a lot of different things that you can add on top of the camera just to give you, um, you know, different benefits that you can't get, you know, on uh, on your, your cellular device. Um, so we talked about prices. Uh, let me go down this and make sure I pretty much got everything. This video probably isn't going to be that long. Um, I'll I'll make it a little extra longer because what I'm going to do is I'm going to film a few things with the camera. And then I'm going to film a few things uh, with the camera on my phone. And, and that way y'all be able to compare things. But, um, yeah, those, those are, you know, a few different things that I can think of to really point out. Um, but like I say, make it, you know, make it shake, make it work. With whatever you got, you know, because I started with my uh, my phone and I was able to give me a camera and I'm, you know, steady learning. It's, you know, learning everything from filming to lighting, just everything. I'm just, you know, I'm still learning. But, you know, um, as I'm going through these journeys of any of the equipment that I get out, I would like to put out, 
you know, my knowledge for anyone who hadn't even started, anyone who was thinking about getting started to try to help them out. Cause that's what I do. But I don't know. I, you know, I got a home here too. I can call there, help me out, or I watch videos on YouTube. So yeah, I'm, you know, trying to help y'all with the things that I know and that I've obtained over my uh, s uh, small period of time filming. So, but yeah, those are some of the biggest things that I can point out right now. Um, I may come with a part two later on and point out some more things, but those are definitely the benefits. So different settings, frames per setting, different lenses, um, different styles as far as being able to film it manual to close out some of that overexposure with the lighting, um, the difference in uh, 1080p and 4K, uh, no interruptions, you know, no phone calls, no deleted footage, no worrying about, you know, your camera being dead and you not knowing because you got a front um, camera. Um, yeah, the flip screen, different attachments like lenses, microphones, and bigger screens, um, gimbals and stuff like that, but you can connect gimbals to your phone as well. Um, different types of grips that you can put on the camera and the prices. Uh, so those are pretty much all the things that I have for now. As always, I appreciate y'all. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and anything that y'all think you know, I might have left out of just some things y'all noticed that's better with a camera, a uh, DSLR camera versus an actual cellular device uh, camera. Hit the comment section and let me know. Until then. Mm -hmm.